Tensions are high in the Taiwan Strait after China conducted precision missile strikes and other military exercises in the waters off the island. This came after House Speaker Nancy Pelosi made a trip to Taiwan this week. She said while there, quote, American stands with Taiwan. China considers the island its own territory and had vowed military action if its sovereignty was threatened. For more, I want to bring in Shelley Rigger. She's a political science professor from Davidson College who specializes in East Asia politics. First, Sherry, thank you for joining us. W was this a military response, or what I should say, is this military response expected from China? Yeah, you know, after the amount of buildup that the PRC gave to the Pelosi visit, it would be pretty shocking if they didn't follow up afterwards with a pretty strong show of military mm. capability. And Shelley, how serious was this reaction? You know, it's not the kind of thing that is some kind of precursor to an immediate military attack on Taiwan itself. But it is a very strong show of both capability and resolve, right? This is Beijing saying, look, we have the ability and we ha are determined that if things get out of hand in a direction that we don't like, you know, these are the kinds of things that we can do, not with targets in the ocean, but with targets on the island of Taiwan. And I'm hoping you could give us a brief primer here, reminding us, what does China consider Taiwan and how does the U.S. view the island? Right. So the PRC government's position is that because in the past the island of Taiwan was governed with together with mainland China, that it should be governed together with mainland China today. And that means, in their view, that their government, the People's Republic of China, led by the Chinese Communist Party, should be in power in Taiwan. Or at least Taiwan should recognize that the PRC state is you know, the, the appropriate state for the Chinese nation and that Taiwan is part of that. However, Taiwan has been separated, in fact, from mainland China since 1895. It was a Japanese colony for 50 years, and since 1945 has been a separately governed territory under uh, people from China. You know, the, the governments have been people of Chinese heritage, but they've been running their affairs separately. So for the U.S., the U.S. position is basically like, we don't care whether you guys get back together or whether you continue to be separated. We just insist that whatever you do, you do it peacefully. Mm. So the U.S. doesn't have a preferred outcome, but it very much has a preferred process. And that is not what we're seeing today. So in that context, geopolitically speaking, was Pelosi's visit a good idea? I don't think it was a good idea because we know that Beijing is very sensitive at this moment, more sensitive than it was even a few months ago and perhaps less sensitive than it will be in another six to nine months from now. They are in the middle of a very critical political process. And in order for that process to go smoothly, and the, the upshot of that that we expect is that Xi Jinping will be appointed for another term, another five-year term as a leader of that country. In order for that process to go smoothly, the environment in which it happens needs to be stable. Mm -hmm. So I think the PRC's strong reaction here is really to the idea that the U.S., or at least someone from the U.S. who they believe is uh, responding to, you know, instruction at the highest level has intentionally and deliberately and without regard to their needs come in and created a problem at this very critical moment. And that someone is Nancy Pelosi. Shelley Rigger, thank you so much for the insight and also for being gracious when I called you Sherry. I appreciate That's everything. Okay. Thank you so much. <laughs> thank you. Take You're care. You're very welcome.